Born in April 1945, I was a war baby. Uh, was brought up in the sense that a gigantic historical event had just taken place, which I had missed, knowing that you were bearing a kind of burden uh, of your uh, parents' generation, that here now we had to do all this, we had to go through all this, now you make it worthwhile. I was definitely the geek. I was uh, into electronics by the time I was 11. My brother obtained a, a crystal radio kit. He cast it aside and I picked it up so I could listen to rock and roll under the covers at night. So this was my electronic door to the world. I had been reading a book about the beatnik scene in uh, San Francisco, a book called The True Bohemia. It was clear that uh, the University of California at Berkeley was a major center of this sort of intellectual ferment. And so I applied to UC and was accepted. When I got there in 1963, uh, Berkeley was a huge place. My first view of the uh, Sproul Plaza with the sea of humanity moving through it, a class break. I just wanted to find out who I was, which is not an unreasonable thing to do at that age. There's a time when the operation of the machine becomes so odious, makes you so sick at heart, that you can't take part. You can't even pass I the made the part. decision, and you've got to okay, put I'm not going to keep my nose clean. I'm going to get involved in this. And I'm going to see what I can do with my technological skills, because that's what I had. At the free speech movement, we had a phone room, which had two phones, and I had a wall full of an infinite number of, they would now be post-its, but then they were just pieces of paper ta uh, taped and, and pinned up. So they were making connections between people. That was the seed of community memory. That was the seed of social media for me. By 1970, I realized that the technology that was needed to provide this kind of social media was networks of computers. Then I remember straightening up and saying, but where am I going to get a computer? There was an organization with the aim of bringing computer power to the people. That group had written an information re retrieval system. You could throw any word in there and have it as a keyword and it would sort everything out. We opened the community memory terminal on August 8th of 1973 at Leopold's Records. So community memory accumulated a tremendous range of topics, uh, discussions, advertisements. There was a poet who advertised there. He said, for more poetry, call the following number and talk with me. Uh, I developed the idea that in order to be useful in a public access environment, computer equipment should grow a computer club around itself, which is a challenge for design. How do you design it so they can grow a club? I worked out a specification for such a device that I called the Tom Swift Terminal. Bob Marsh, he started Processor Technology Corporation. He said, I'll pay you to design this Tom Swift Terminal if you'll do it my way. And that became the VDM-1 display, and that uh, begat the Sol 20, because immediately after getting that finished, he said, now I want you to do a computer around that display. It's the architecture that is pretty much the standard today. I was then found myself in another revolution, the personal computer revolution. And then all of a sudden the Altair came out and everything changed. The first Altair had hit town then it wound up in the garage of uh, Gordon French with 30 people standing around looking at it. I proposed that we each tell what it was that we wanted to do, what brought us there, what the resources we had, what resources we needed. Fred Moore took notes. We went around the room, but it was the first of uh, 11 years worth of meetings every two weeks. If you know Adam Osborne, he was like a Gilbert and Sullivan character, and with a British accent that made everybody feel that he was smarter than they were. He called me over and said, Lee, I've been wanting to talk to you. I want to do a hardware company and really do things right. And then he said, I know what we're going to do. And he sketched out the Osborne computer. Adam's real uh, 
innovation in that regard was bundling the software and insisting upon a place where it could physically reside in the computer case. So when you closed up that case, you knew that A, it was waterproof, B, everything you needed was in there. And we've got to make a society that will last, that is sustainable as a society, not just one that turns in fast returns and then crumbles. Uh, I want to be involved in that to the extent that I can. I plan to be making tools for that process. And uh, I rather envy the young these days who are going to have that opportunity to remake society as it ought to be done.